Yeah. Yeah. Members of City Council, please attend the call meeting of the City Council to be held in the sixth floor conference room, 801 Crawford Street, 5 p.m. Tuesday, June 24, 2014, for the purpose of a public work session. In addition, you may consider a motion to go into closed meeting by order of the mayor. Mr. Cherry? Here. Mr. Edmonds? Here. Mr. Meeks? Mr. Moody? Here. Ms. Simmons? Here. Ms. Randall? Mayor Wright? Here. Mr. Rowe? Before we get started, just want to let everybody know we're going to take a break in the action at 5.30? Approximately. Approximately 5.30. We've got the uh, antique vehicles lined up, over 100 of them. Yeah. Oh. And they're going to be here in the roundabout, and they're going to head down to the old former uh, Holiday Inn site. So we want to give them a nice wave as they parade by. So oh. just so everybody will know. And we've been coordinating, and I, I think the sheriff's in contact with you, and the sheriff is the ex escort mm -hmm. they're due anywhere from 5 30 to 10 to right up. yeah yeah something like that and we have a relatively light uh work session agenda so what what you might do is plow through the work session agenda mm -hmm. and then that would be a natural place for you to break mm -hmm. and then we do have two items for the close session uh councilman meets call me he's running late he mm -hmm. said he'd be here at 5 30. Uh, so, because the first item, the downtown utility rehabilitation project, is an answer to a question you raised, would you all mind if, we, if we flip it, it. Uh, flip. and go to, um, you have two ordinances uh, on the agenda that, are per that relate to the current budget that is about to end on June 30th, that's just the 13-14 budget. Uh, the first uh, relates to the school budget and its transfers. And Carol, would you come up? We don't have a PowerPoint presentation, mm -hmm. but as you know, for the first time you've done categorical uh, funding for the schools, which means in order for the schools to change categories, mm -hmm. uh, they have to come to you and you do it by ordinance. And so that's what's on the agenda tonight. Carol's been meeting with Chris Steele. Yes. And uh, this uh, is really a simple ma matter. It doesn't change the bottom line. Yes, and you, you may recall we, we just did this about a month ago. And obviously there's, um, the categorical appropriation process is, um, is new to both us and the schools. And as, you know, as we would expect, there may be some tweaking that's required along the way. Uh, as John said, this, all this does is move money between the categories. It doesn't change the bottom line. Um, the, there's also a change with the, the 378000 that was returned in the school activity funds. We appropriated to, to the school activity funds, but the schools um, are treating that as an addition to their general fund, and they have um, line items set up under each schools that allocate a portion of that activity fund money to be available for their use. So this also moves that appropriation to the, the school's general fund. And um, you know, again, it's, it's essentially a housekeeping item, and mm -hmm. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Okay. Yes, ma'am. The, the, the activity fund, I know we just did that two weeks ago or four weeks ago. So are they, are they going to be able to spend this before June 30th? They may not. In fact, um, when, when I met with Chris, he said that they've made those funds available to the schools, but they, the schools are not drawing them down uh, as quickly as they had thought. And if that's the case, then it, you know, it would be on the back. And we do this all over again. Yeah. yeah. Right. Is anybody, I know that's not really our job, but. If committee? principals are watching this on TV, they should know that they should be using those funds. They might yes. not be aware that they have them. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, uh, I think they've alerted them. I think they got some items, playgrounds and stuff like that, but I think that was the reason why they wanted to try to get this as early as possible so they could utilize it. If not, then we'll just have to go through the process and reallocate it, it again. For, the, for the next year. But hopefully uh, this will allow them to secure whatever it is they were. I know Hodges Manor had $25,000 was for a playground or a play set or something. I think that money was taken out. And I think Churchland had some uniforms and something else. So I'm sure they're waiting for that, but I'm sure they probably won't use the whole bit. But anyway. What was the holdup? 
as far as drawing down the school, the, the funds, um, I, I'm not, I, I don't know. Uh, all I know is that they, they had expected the schools to request the money more, you know, more rapidly than and, and, they did. And, and I'm speaking of our end. Well, we, we appropriated the money, but we appropriated, we assumed that it was going back to the, to the source that it came from, which was the school activity funds. You may recall that the schools transferred money from their general fund to the school activity funds and then it was re re repaid to the city because it was unspent funds. So we appropriated it back to the source, but um, those school activity funds are not appropriated uh, or considered unappropriated funds by the schools, which is w one issue that we still need to address is, uh, you know, do all of the funds need to be appropriated by, by council? And we need to get closure on that so that everybody has a common understanding of yeah. What that process is. So. The state code is clear that they do have to be appropriated, mm -hmm. which leads us to the, the next issue. Okay. Uh, Thank you. For a long period of time, the city said this donation account. I mean, there are literally people who donate to the city. Uh, that's one thing. And then the count too was used as an expense refund for such things as the uh, women in fire conference. You know, you get people to come in and pay the conference registration <coughs> that went into the donation account and then the expenses for the con uh, the conference went went out and so going forward what we're going to do is appropriate the revenue on the revenue side of the budget and the expenditures on the expenditure side of the budget and so this ordinance will take up take care of, of the current fiscal year and July will come forward do one that will take care of 14, 15, and then there's a lot of numbers here. Then for the fiscal year 15, 16, it will be already in the budget. Okay. Shouldn't it have already been like that anyway? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's. I mean, that's a, that's a. You use that example for that conference. That's a great conference. We've oh, got. Oh, absolutely. Women in fire from come from the West Coast, Arizona, California, yeah. and. Every year there's some last minute I need money for this or that and well, it should just be you, there. <laughs> when you have a conference at the hotel, you got, you know, pay for rooms, I mean the mm -hmm. conference room, mm -hmm. uh, the audio equipment, etc. Mm -hmm. um, okay. While we wait for Councilman Meeks, I passed out this, um, I, again, I told you uh, that I don't want you to be blindsided by uh, anything uh, particularly uh, in the news media uh, we've had a request for information dealing with the ROI from from Tim on the utility fund and I emphasize the utility fund we don't have a sewer fund we don't have a water fund it's the utility fund in fact we had uh, the sewer system before we had a water system uh, visualize Portsmouth uh, starting at the Elizabeth River and expanding west and uh, sewer lines went in and it went to a natural sewer plant which was the uh, Elizabeth River and that type of sewage treatment goes back to Roman days you know <laughs> that's how you got rid of your sewage is that you dumped it into the river and uh, general fund money was used for the utility for the sewer system the history of the water system uh, goes back uh, to 1880 and again that comes after uh, the water system I mean after the sewer system when the city contracted with uh, a private uh, water company and uh, to buy water and these, these water companies went through several iterations. Uh, they were granted both corporate <coughs> charters by the General Assembly and one by the Circuit Court. And they had a buyout provision uh, that the city could go in and, and buy the assets. And it had a arbitration clause. Well, uh, the city had to spend money to come up with the value of the system. We eventually bought the system. Uh, in 1910, the General Assembly created the Portsmouth Water Commission, and the city uh, invested a 
about eighty to eighty five thousand dollars of general fund money in that if you future value that to today uh, that's worth about a hundred and twenty million so there is a, a strong record that the city has used general fund money to uh, start the utility system um, we use a return on investment which we think is fair the gold standard for t determining that in Virginia is the State Corporation Commission and if you've ever watched a rate hearing where let's say the D Dominion Virginia power goes in they have a phalanx of lawyers and accountants that come in and they have to prove their numbers and justify not only the rate but the rate of return on their investment and we fall within that range as you see from this uh, sheet so I, I don't think that anyone can claim that we are our return on our investment is too high uh, if you use the uh, the gold standard for the state of Virginia which is the State Corporation Commission which really grills the utility companies so I wanted to let you know uh, and we don't bifurcate just like we talked about at a previous council meeting <coughs> and that was great quip bill we don't have a sewer backhoe and a water backhoe we got one backhoe and it might do a sewer job in the morning and a water job in the afternoon so to try to break it out so this is the return on the water and this is the return on the uh, sewer we don't do it that way okay all right well let's go to the sewer yep. rehab project here we get it up um, at the last council meeting you asked that <coughs> the council voted to po postpone this matter to this session and what it what we have here both state and local procurement policies require that when the accumulation of change orders on a project reaches just shy of 25 percent of the original contract in order to go above that 25 percent uh, it's got to be approved by you all and so uh, Brian um, we only have two slides here we have a slide again that you saw at your last meeting which is a slide of the project for quadrant one and then we have a table that shows you all the change orders to date and you can see we're just shy of 25 percent the next one will take us above 25 percent Brian. Okay. so good evening mayor vice mayor members of council ladies and gentlemen again uh, we're here to talk about our downtown uh, master plan rehabilitation project and the uh, request to uh, exceed the 25% change order limit. Um, just to refresh your memory, this is the project area. Uh, the areas in yellow um, have already been completed, new pavement, everything is done in those areas. And then these areas outlined in red are the current construction zones and the areas with the dashed lines um, are the future work still to be done in, in this quadrant. Um, so you have the Effingham here, City Hall, in the lower right-hand corner, um, just to re reorient you. Um, so with the change orders, uh, and, uh, and I think we've sent you some information in the past, um, you know, we, we, we really try and vet you know, both our design team and when we're doing these projects, because we don't like change orders. We try to limit them. But when you have a project of this nature, when you do an underground construction um, of facilities that are this old, you can do all the best work and reconnaissance in the world, and, the, and you'll still find something when you open the ground that you weren't expecting to be there, a conflict with another utility, um, in, in one case for us, a water line that should have had a lot of useful life left, but the appearance um, was that that wasn't the case, so we weren't planning on replacing that water line. Once we exposed it, we realized we really needed to do it while we were there. Um, and so we do try to limit that. One of the things I would tell you is that with change orders, I know there's a concern about, because you know the contractor always has his markup and which adds to the cost, and we're very conscientious about that. This is a unit price contract. 
So a lot of the change orders, the price for the works, so for example, that 16-inch water line, we already had a unit price established. So there's really no negotiation. We just changed the quantity, and the unit price is already established, and that was established during the bid process when we did the original contract. So um, do you take in consideration that you've already done the digging and all of that? So why would the unit price be the same if you've now opened this hole and you've exposed this line that needs to be replaced. There's a whole lot of work that's been done on the base contract mm -hmm. that should make the unit price of replacing this water line a lot cheaper because if you're using that same unit price, you know what I'm saying? You're, you're right, well, it's a unit, but we're, but we're doing more work. That's the thing. So, for example, in originally, um, originally we say we were supposed to replace 500 feet. We, we knew that to start with. So we replaced that 500 feet and there's a unit price, but we now discover we have to do an extra 1,000 feet, so we got to keep on going. That unit price just continues <coughs> along because they, they based it on the unit price. In that case, for the line, it's per linear foot installed. So the, so the unit price takes care of everything, the digging, the pipe material, we're putting the pavement back, all of that is included in that unit price. Understood. But, but if you open it up and you just said you had a line that you didn't anticipate right. hadn't a taint change out because of its appearance and you did a UT or whatever you did and found corrosion, you took it out, why would that unit price be the same? Because it's now open and exposed, just a matter of cutting it, taking it out and putting it in. Shouldn't that be a different unit well, price? The, 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 well, um, um, that, 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 um, oh, I see your point. I can't, I mean, the, the unit price was what was established in the contract. So that's what, I mean, that's really what we go by. Um, and, in, in, in other words, case, are we paying for the same work twice, is yeah. what the mayor's saying? It's, I think that was Danny's concern. Yeah. I think on well, something. And, and Danny's right. concern, and he and I have talked a couple of different times. Um, <coughs> the big, the big change order was the sidewalks and the bricks. And um, at the time that the original bid project was put out, uh, it did not contemplate uh, replacing the whole sidewalk. And you remember the conversation yep. that we had in here. We said it was going to be 800, 800 900, and 900. Yeah. And, it, and it was. And so the concern is, do you go to a pipe contractor to do brick work? Going forward, what we're what we're we're anticipating all this. And this is a perfect time to say when we get to quadrant two, which is just take this area and flip it north, which is Old Town. Uh, Old Town. Um, what we're going to do is replace everything in kind. There's been some concerns about: Are we going to take out the granite curb and replace that with concrete? No. If it's granite curb there, granite curb's going back. And the cobblestone? If it's aggregate, that river stone, that goes back. So our motto is leave no trace, so that when we finish up, um, it's going to look the same, but better. Uh, if, you go down, if you go down London and do this some, someday and, and start at the waterfront and go west, you'll see <coughs> the pavement and the cobblestone not the cobblestone, but the granite curve is about even. You'll 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 see undulations in in the in the granite. And what will happen when the project is done, it's gonna have the right elevation, curb relationship to the surface of the street. That undulation will be taken out. It will look brand new, but it will look the same. And so we've we've been conveying that message to the Old Town Business Association and to the Old Town uh, Civic League because they're concerned about the historic nature of it, and so we. And so all that work will be contemplated um, in the base bid for the project. Now going to slide two and three, this gives you a list of the change orders and some change orders had uh, no dollar amount effect because you're changing either the sequence of the work or, or the, the duration. But the line that we get concerned about is this, this column here and if we go to the next slide you see we're at 24.6 so the next change order would take us above 25%. And what we've tried to do is anticipate 
all the which is what two and a half million dollars right now is what we're over yeah and a big ch chunk of that again is the sidewalk almost uh, more than eight hundred thousand yeah, bucks all righty <coughs> We got, a, we got a list of those changes. Yes, sir. That and those? that's what this does. It gives you every change. And so uh, this is on your agenda tonight. And again, I've had uh, conversations with, with Danny. I sent you this information in advance. Now, are we making sure that our pricing and this whole unit of measure price that we use is, is pretty consistent with any other cities, Brian? Because, I mean, you know, the other thing is the, the margin that these guys out here bragging that they're getting here in Portsmouth, which I think is crazy, but uh, because if you're getting a margin, you shouldn't well, be sharing it. But well, the, the it does raise the question about our price. And, you know, because most of these guys live for change orders, and we need to be smart enough knowing you can't anticipate sure. everything that's going to incur, but this change order business is one of these things that, that, that really does send these guys run into the these bank. These are good questions. Hey, and we get concerned about change orders even when we pick the engineer and the architect. One of the questions that you ask is, what is your history on change orders? If they, and, and, and tell me some of your projects and what were the accumulative change orders. If one comes back and says, well, I only had one, and another one says, I had 23, then that might tell you that the guy that's got 23 or the gal that's got 23 is pretty sloppy in their design work. So we we're, we share your concern about change orders because we want to make sure that we get the, the right dollar value. And um, as we've said, not only tonight, but before, when you open up the ground, you do get su surprised. Now, for example, um, we are we're in our survey of, can we go back to the well, our survey of what's north of High Street and east of Effingham uh, for Quadrant 2 is not locating, you know, everything that's in the right-of-way and all the topo information. But we're also locating trees because there are some old trees there. And we have one of our subcontractors in that work is an arborist. Uh, because we want to save the trees to the greatest extent that we can. But, but think about, I mean, you've, you've walked on sidewalks that where they undulate with the tree roots. Those tree roots are really aggressive, to, and they're looking for water. And they're part of our infiltration problem. They'll go in the crack or the joint of the two pipes and say, oh, man, I've hit the gold, <laughs> the mother load here. I've hit water. And it separates the pipes, and so what you do is get infiltration from groundwater uh, coming into the pipe. And so we'll have to we'll, we'll cut the tree roots, uh, but we're trying to save as many trees as possible. So this has been a very tedious, and we're at the front end of the design work for up here. This has been a very tedious design, I mean, a survey process to get all that information. Speaking of uh, uh, the history of change orders, what, what's does this contractor have a history with us? I'll check. I don't know off the top this of my head. Well, this uh, this is. You, you, you have the answer. Um, Stand I, up. I, they um, were previously pre-con utility construction. This is. At, I've only been here two right. and a half years, but this is the first project I've done with them. My understanding, um, when they were part of the open bid process, we did do the background check and have them fill out the form as part of the procurement process and checked with other municipalities that had used them in similar projects um, and didn't get feedback that they had a history of that. So our um, background check includes uh, exactly. looking at yes. uh, right. and Right. And we had experience that when they were organized as pre-con, they did two phases of Prentice Park. And we had and we had very good experience with them in Prentice Park and know the track record from there as well. You know, you know on bids, you want to make sure that the bid is responsive. I mean, when you get a really low bid, you're concerned. Wait a minute, what what did they leave out? Or well, a lot of them come in low because if you got a history of change orders and we know we can get two and a half million more out of Portsmouth than over here, then I'll lowball the other guy, and that's. 
something that we should all be cognizant of and try to minimize that as much as possible so you don't get into that that whole and what piece. you're hearing is that it starts at the front end with the design team mm -hmm. It starts, it also includes once the bids come in to do a check to find out, you know, what, what this company's record is. And then we try to be very judicious in our change orders going forward. And to answer your question about paying for work twice, this is a unit rate project. Mm -hmm. So it's sep we haven't dug a hole and then paid for it twice to backfill it. We pay for the backfill once as a unit rate item. So it, each line item is included in whatever scope of work we need to change. It's not, they dug a hole and they got paid for it under eight inch sewer and they're gonna get paid for it under 16 inch water. It's, it's that doesn't separate. happen, it's not. No, okay, not thanks. Redundancy. Thank you, Brian, very much. Okay, Appreciate any, it. Yep. any questions on that? Well, do you wanna go into a closed session? Yeah, what let's go into close and try to get that real yes, quick sir. before we get the, the yeah. antiques. What do we have out there? Model T's and I don't think they're that old. It's they're pre, not that old. Pre nineteen seventy something. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's not old at all. <laughs> no, I don't <laughs> think so. Pre nineteen seventy. Gee, what? I got some ties holding that. <laughs> I move to go into a closed meeting pursuant to the provisions of Virginia Code Section 2.2-3711 for the following purposes. Discussion concerning the acquisition of real property for a public purpose in the London Boulevard corridor, where discussion in an open meeting would adversely affect the negotiating strategy of the city as permitted under subsection A5, and consultation with legal counsel concerning legal issues surrounding prayer at council meetings as permitted under subsection A7. Before you, um, <clears throat> before you vote on that, would you amend that first one and to say the High Street Corridor instead of London Boulevard, please? So done. Okay. Mr. Cherry? Yes. Mr. Edmonds? Yes. Mr. Mix is absent. Mr. Moody? Yes. Ms. Simmons? Yes. Ms. Randall? Yes. Mayor Wright? Yes. We are, sir, we are enclosed. Okay. We're enclosed. Thank you. Right, thank you.